the sun shone upon the harbour at Dar es Salaam. And sunny too was every hut in the city itself. And not only in the city, but throughout Tanganyika. A new nation had arisen. Independence had been achieved. And flying in to represent the Queen at the historic ceremonies was the Duke of Edinburgh. His Royal Highness was welcomed to Tanganyika by the Governor, Sir Richard Turnbull, his wife, and Mr. Julius Nureri, the Prime Minister. For him, what tremendous hours lay ahead in the three days of the Duke's visit. 39 years old, graduate of Edinburgh University, Premier Nureri has brought his nation to the promised land of independence. Tanganyika was German East Africa before the First World War. In the peace settlement, it came under British mandate. And under liberal rule, it moved slowly forward to the day when it could achieve self-government. The visitor from Kenya was Jomo Kenyatta, probably sharing Nereri's dream of an East African federation. Floodlit on the glassy water of the harbour were British men of war. It was approaching midnight and the ceremony in the National Stadium with a military tattoo to begin with. New colours were brought onto the parade ground. Their presentation marked a change of name. The King's African Rifles will now be the Tanganyika Rifles. Almost on the stroke of midnight, the Governor and the Prime Minister saluted the new flag. The next day's sun rose on independent Tanganyika. Not, however, a holiday for everybody. There'd be a spot of domestic trouble if the men went home to an empty table. The new flag at the National Stadium as the Duke read a personal message from the Queen and added his own congratulations and good wishes. He then handed to Premier Nereri the constitutional instruments. Everyone in Britain and the Commonwealth wishes well to the independent state of Tanganyika.